But you're not denying that in separate government programs there's been weather modification and, and, and weather manipulation programs. I mean, those have been declassified. Well, again, I, I'm, not, I'm not involved with such programs, and I'm not familiar with them, and I can't speak to them, frankly. How did you get into this? I mean, how did you decide to get a doctorate in, in all of this? Uh... <laughs> well, you don't want my history because uh, my, my graduate work was in an area totally outside of this, but then I was uh, – uh, brought, brought into the Air Force as an officer in 1967 and assigned to the Air Force Research Lab up near Boston. And I learned basically a new, new area outside of my Ph.D. work. But that was great. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. And I was assigned to a group in radio science and atmospheric science. And, and I liked it so much that when my tour was up in four years, I, I was signed on as a civilian employee of the laboratory, and I've been there over Well, well you years. talked about a lot of other programs going on, a lot of other directorates and groups. I mean, are you privy to all the programs going on with HARP, or are you privy over one one directorate? What do you mean, the HARP? I'm, the HARP is assigned, uh, he's under the uh, directorate I'm in, and uh, it has no uh, tentacles or no other wings in other places I'm not familiar with. It's it's a pretty uh, self-contained program. That, uh, no, saying, you just said that there. Okay, so it's one program there, but I know there's a lot of other agencies and things that are there looking at the data, and I guess uh, you know, I guess they get space on the system to to run their own tests. Or I mean, how many different agencies are involved looking at the data, doing experiments? Well, we have uh, it's a joint program. Actually, it was set up as a joint program some years ago uh, with the Air Force and the Navy. Uh, and then with, with the participation of, uh, for example, the uh, DARPA, the Events and Things Research Projects Agency has been involved. In fact, all three agencies were, were the funders uh, over the recent four or five years that, uh, that basically brought the facility to the capability it has. And so in terms of uh, what HARP can study, radio wave interactions in the atmosphere and space, and how they might impact communication, uh, radars. Okay, stay there, sir. Final segment with our guest. He's the director of the HARP program, Dr. Paul Cossey. We really appreciate him joining us. Stay with us. Don't want no shackles. Don't want no shackles on me. We're back live, ladies and gentlemen. Final segment with the... Director of the Heart Program, manager for the Air Force Research Laboratory Space Vehicles Director. He's the head honcho over at all. We're unable to get to Dr. Jim Bates on and Ed Kennedy, the uh, U.S. Naval Research Laboratory at the end said, oh, we don't think we're going to give him classification or allow him to go do that for some reason. I, I mean, if it's no big deal, and during the break you guys were saying you might invite me up to a Heart uh, open house, uh, I mean, Doc, if it's not anything so secret or anything, why would why would the Navy, uh, who originally wanted us to have Ed Kennedy on, Dr. Ed Kennedy, why would they not want him on with us? No, that, uh, that's a little unfair to what's, what's going on. Just, just like in our case, the, the uh, agencies have public affairs office to kind of funnel and channel uh, questions so that they're con so that consistent and the right people are involved and. That's usually done ahead of time. Unfortunately, in this case, um, the, I, I was only brought in this fairly recently because I've been, been out, but um, it was worked through the Air Force uh, at Albuquerque, and that was Michael Kleiman in our office. I understand. So it, it, it was just a snafu because it was set up uh, so Yeah, soon. but the connection wasn't made through the Navy offices, uh, and, and I wasn't realized until today, I guess, but... No, yeah, normally it would have been. Oh, so that's about, that's so bureaucracy. Time, They're mad that they weren't contacted. I understand, Doctor. Uh, I mean, it just it wasn't gone. It didn't go through the public affairs offices. That's all. That's always the case. It has to be done. Uh, it's just to have consistency and make sure the right people are involved and that uh, there's you know not that everyone knows what's going on. How many interviews have you done, Doctor, on Harp? I mean, for radio or TV? Oh, uh, there, there's been quite a few with newspaper people and, and uh, uh, magazine people and a couple times, I guess, uh, not not live radio, but uh, national public radio has asked questions. And then they, they actually send people to some of the open houses and get a little more and talk to them. What's the best question you were ever asked? What's that? What's the best question uh, you, you've ever been asked by the media? Well, the... 
unfortunately, the questions are, are more tied to, to what it isn't, and so, uh, so you get a lot of humorous questions asked, which are hard to answer, because you hard, it's hard to say what you aren't, you know. It's, you just kind of like, are you hiding purpose. space aliens in the basement? Yeah, or, or, or say, well, you know, uh, one of the best questions I got was from a phone call that went on for 15 minutes. It was from a lady in Alaska way in the early days of HARP and that, that was concerned, and, and she went on for 15, 20 minutes, and I patiently answered every question. And then, and I thought I had brought her around to understanding that we weren't uh, harmful. And in fact, you know, we work there. Uh, we can't, uh, we, we're interested in our health too and things like that. We went, you know, we're not fools. And I thought I convinced her of that. And at the end of this 15 minutes, she says, that's what I thought you said. And I don't still believe a word you said. Well, you know, you get dumbfounded in something like that. <laughs> you know, you, uh, I asked, like, answered 50 questions from a very one at a time and very, carefully, and then the answer is, is, well, I thought you'd say that, and I don't believe you. So that's the kind of thing that's frustrating. I understand. I get accused of things that aren't true. Look, I have no doubt that, that, that most of the program is what you say it is, uh, and I'm sure that it does get confused with other programs and other things that are going on, because I've had the father of weather weapons on, and you know, there's all these declassified documents on that, creating hurricanes, steering them, killing them in the 60s. Well, I guess, I, again, I see that, and we've certainly been accused of that, which is fascinating. Of course, we're not, you know, it, it's totally off the wall, but where those ideas come from even, where's the physical basis for them? Because, uh, you know, I'm not aware of any physical basis. Well, the weather control is with cloud seeding, the, the, the documented standard well, that's research. Thing. You know, you're talking about maybe putting chemicals up in the clouds. Uh -huh. Yeah. You're not talking about uh, some... Let's see, uh, people believe that with HARP that chemicals are put in, and then, so some of the scientists have said, and then uh, these these different radio uh, arrays then somehow uh, energize those those uh, chemicals that have been put in the air, those metals, and that somehow that's uh, part of a weather modification or, st or part of some type of over-the-horizon radar. I'm not sure, but those are the different uh, ideas. Yeah, again, I, I see those things, but I'm just flabbergasted because I don't know what the technical base is, and certainly it's nothing to do with with HARP or any capability that HARP would have. Remember, but there is a lot of classified stuff you're doing, though. No, actually not. In fact, uh, uh, nothing I'm doing is classified. Uh, well, when I had General Parton on, who said decades ago he was involved uh, in HARP, he, he wouldn't talk about it, but I had him on about another subject, and a caller called in, and he just said, it's all lies, what you hear about it's lies, well, but, but it's classified, and I'm not going to talk know, about it. I don't know who General Parton is or, or was, but it, he's talking about decades ago, HARP, HARP is only uh, got started even in the planning stages in the 1990s, and we really only finished the site uh, last February, and uh, are now using it uh, uh well, he was the head of Air Force Weapons Development, and, and, he, and he, uh, he said he'd been involved. Uh, I think he got out in the early 90s, so I'm not sure. But you might look that up. I'm, I'm sure he, he just wouldn't well, talk about it. I, I'm the old, oldest person with the program. I was with it from day one, and, and I know of no such connection with anyone like that. And, I'm, you know, that's just a fact. Are there other um, radio testing uh, systems that could be confused with that? Uh, again, if you're, you're talking about other facilities, other programs, uh, I'm not privy. I, I don't. I'm not aware of them. Uh, again, HARP uh, it does its interactions out the, hundreds of miles up. Uh, remember, the things that control your weather are much closer to Earth. No, I understand. In fact, that. you know, airplanes that fly in the jet stream produce more power than what HARP can. But we know that the that, that the different um, space uh, waves, the different uh, types of particles that come into the atmosphere, they're now saying that's a large part of our weather in the yeah, formation yeah, of clouds. and What you're talking about. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a mainline scientific, uh, you know, the sun and, and, and uh, different particles. That, yeah. Yeah. You know, um, solar, solar certainly affects, but, uh, but in terms of the interactions of radio waves such as HARP, uh, uh, they're, they're puny. Remember, lightning... <laughs> goes off tens of times a second all over the world and produces radio waves and strength and energy that, that just dwarf anything. A, a, a oh, I understand. The sun is a huge, man makes, huge, huge broadcaster of radio waves. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, puny. We're puny. In fact, uh, 
uh, our interactions are so weak, uh, we need to be where we are because it's what we call relatively quiet from uh, electrical noise. Uh, and the interactions, the things we're studying that we can do with HARP are so weak out in space that we need very sensitive instruments just to detect them and, and just to try to understand them. But they do produce a method by which we can repeat experiments and try to understand these processes that occur when radio waves interact in, 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 a, in a space medium. And that's important. Uh, and, and you understand uh, what affects your radio waves, good or bad. Well, have you guys discovered anything? I mean, I, like a cyclotron you know, discovers new particles. I mean, have you guys discovered uh, any new theories or, or ideas or, or, or uh, well, different laws? There's a lot of basic research to understand the, the physical processes that occur when radio waves interact in an ionized medium up in space. And, and, and then try to understand those and, and hopefully apply them to, uh, to uh, applications related ideas. Uh, the facility itself is for the research. It's not an operational thing to communicate with I understand, pure, I understand pure research. Uh, what about other countries, the Russians, the Chinese, the European Union? Do they have similar programs, Doctor? The, uh, the European community has a facility in Toronto, Norway, as part of the, what they call the ice gas community there that, that actually was uh, a facility like HARP that, that's been around a lot longer than HARP uh, to, to do the same kind of uh, relative uh, kind of research to understand the uh, uh, physics and chemistry and uh, radio wave interactions in space. Who do you pass your data on to once it's done? Well, most of their work is published in open literature. In fact, if you go to, uh, to the scientific, go, go to Google Scientific and type in Harp, you'll see uh, tens and hundreds, uh, tens and uh, hundreds of papers produced out of the research of Harp, and, and you'll see the authors are leading scientists in the university communities, for example, and, and the government laboratories. Yeah, you, you uh, brought up published in the open literature. Uh, we've been a subject of articles in prestigious journals such as Nature, uh, and. Uh, we are uh, scientists participate in international conferences that are well known uh, around the world. It, it's very uh, it's sure. in the open literature. Sure, shifting gears, I, Doctor. I challenge you. Type it in. Go to Google uh, uh, the scientific part and just type in just Harp, and I'm sure you'll see lots of papers being brought up and uh, uh, describing the type of work that's done there, and you'll see. Uh, uh, by and large, university community is uh, primarily involved with it. Now, HARP is uh, several different bases, isn't it? Several different facilities. No, HARP is uh, we basically have a, a site uh, up in Alaska, the Kona, Alaska. And what you, I don't know whether it was offline that you mentioned, it was originally going to be way back in the uh, 70s and 80s. There were plans to build a Air Force over the horizon radar system up at that facility back in those days, but with the uh, change in uh, uh, strategic situation, that, that program was dropped in the 90s, and after a lengthy environmental approval process, uh, the, the, that site became available to us uh, for the uh, scientific purposes of, of building the heart facility. Uh, that's, as I say, up in, in uh, Dakota, Alaska. Okay. That's the only location we have, but we do have uh, diagnostic instruments at various locations on the ground in Alaska. Photometers? Uh, uh, photometers, those are optical type devices that, that uh, uh, if, if you, uh, if the weather's right, so to speak, in space, a space weather, and there's not uh, too much natural uh, disturbance going on like aurora, it's, it's what we call quiet and all those kind of nights. When we send the radio waves from HARP up, we can produce miniature uh, emissions of light that oh. are somewhat like aurora things, but they're so weak that, oh. that if there's any other natural aurora going on, we wouldn't see I understand. Them. So you, you observe those. What, 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 are, what are magnometers or magnetometers? Um, those are instruments that uh, typically are uh, set out all over the world uh, to to measure the Earth's magnetic field, the geomagnetic field that surrounds the Earth. 